Hey now, back in the summer, some global warmingists uh, decided uh, that they wanted to prove you could have a wind-powered car, OK? So they made this. There uh, it is. Yeah, I read about this thing. They said they were inspired by Donald Campbell. Want to know what they called that? Bluebird. No. Greenbird. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, you, you would never tire of hitting them over the head with a chair, would no, you? No, never, never, never. Don't never. take Donald's name in vain again. I've worn this chair out, get me another. Yellow, would, I, too I, thick, organic, <laughs> big tea bag wearing. <laughs> Can I have another chair now? Exactly, I've worn it out on your head. But I, they also then say that uh, wind powered cars are the future of motoring. Well, They're just not! <laughs> Look at it! It's got a hundred foot mast on it. Where are you going to park it? Wind power is no more the future of motoring than magic power cars or <laughs> thought power. It just won't. It's not. It's a stupid idea. You can't, you can't depend on a wind-powered vehicle, can you, for the road? But what if you were hideously injured and you were waiting for the wind-powered ambulance? Yeah. Also, so, sorry we're late, Gov. We had to tack all up Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> can I you just know, ask a question as well? What? How do you park a wind-powered car? You moor it. Doesn't well, it after watching away? you in a Triumph Herald in Dover Harbour with great exactly. difficulty. Well, where do you park it? Look at the height of it. Anyway, listen, OK, to highlight global warming, they took it out to Australia to show, a t actually, to try and set a, a land speed record for wind-powered vehicles. Yeah, and? And the, uh, the attempt had to be called off because it was too cold and rainy. <laughs> Now, you know in America, if you want to buy a Nissan but you want to spend a bit more money, well, a lot more money actually on it, you can buy something called an Infinity. Anybody know what I'm on about? Yes, this is not good. Uh, well, now, OK, here it is. It's coming to Britain, OK? Now, I've um, got some details of it here, OK? And I want you two to tell me if you understand the first thing about what I'm... Oh, God. <laughs> Please get His eyes have gone as well. He's getting a monocle. Happen. Wait a minute. No, see if you can read this again. Understand this. See if you can read it. it. Well, yes, it's got an audiophile quality head and incorporating double oversampling 24 bit 96 kilohertz Burr Brown digital analog converters. No. Uh, Anyone here know what anything on that means? No? OK, let me go on. It's got HVAC functions and a 9.3 gigabyte music box hard drive with compact flash drive slot. Not nice. What? It's a fridge magnet? It's a snow cone maker? I have no clue what any of this means. Has it got an engine? Now, it's funny you should say that. You have to go, I've torn it out, you have to go to page 9 before you get to the engine where it tells you it's a 3.7 litre V6. How much power? They don't know. How can they not know they built this it? This is from Nissan themselves, OK? 330 horsepower estimated. Talk estimated. They know about its gigabyte slot, <laughs> but they don't know how much power it puts out. Is it actually a car at all? Yes, it's a car for people who say, I would have a Lexus, but there's too much prestige and tradition associated <laughs> with Lexus, so I want something a little bit more nouveau riche. They'll probably do a Pringle special edition, the parvenu. <laughs> I bet you any money they sell none. At all. Not one. Better not. Uh, do you know the new Lotus Europa? Not really, no. No, <laughs> I've never seen one. No, don't I. It's interesting that I, I filmed one for Top Gear last year. It's such a dreary car, we never put the film out. Or it might be that I made a dreary film about it, whatever. It, no, we never actually <laughs> put it on the television, OK? Well, now, Lotus has come up with a way of making it more appealing. So what they've done is upped the price from £33,000 to 150,000? 150,000. What? Wow. What, they filled it with diamonds? Yes, they have. No, seriously. No, they have filled it with diamonds. We've got a picture of the interior here, OK? You can see some of them glinting on the top of the gear lever. But that's basically what it is, 164 diamonds. Now, they didn't get them from De Beers, OK, or Hatton Garden, or Bond Street. They went to a company called Windsor Bishop. Have you heard of them? They build themselves as East Anglia's leading diamond specialist. Leading? There's a lot of diamonds up there in the silt. <laughs> well, yes, that's crop rotation, isn't it? You plant things, you go carrots, curly kale, diamonds, yeah. fallow. <laughs> carrots, curly kale, diamonds, Is it me? Fallow. Yeah, almost certainly it is, yeah. No, because I quite like the idea of that. Oh, then yes, it is just you. Does anybody here like the idea of that? What, a diamond studded loaf. Yes, do you remember the Techno Marine watch that was a really plastic cheap watch? And then they put diamonds all around it. And I quite like that. Maybe I'm a wag. <laughs> what? 
Do you like it? Do you like my jacket? Do you want it? I really, I'm, so I'm not joking, I really like the idea of that. I think I'm Abby Clancy. <laughs> Why but if you, you think about it, if you pull in a petrol station and they say, oh, if you've got your credit card, and then they say, oh, well, I'll leave your watch, you need to prize one of the diners out of gear and I'm give them that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, it's superb. It's Colin Chapman car. said, simplify and add diamonds. No, That's he didn't what he, he say did that. Say. He oh, didn't. no, he didn't. But anyway, look, we're going to move on now.